Hey you guys, this is Janice Wilson Hughes. We're here in my Evolution Stoneware Pottery Studio. Today I want to share with you a live feed that I did showing how to sculpt hollow pinch pot hearts. I recorded this back on April 4th and the reason why is because that particular day 4 4 at 4 p.m. would have been the opening of the solo show that I have planned at this fantastic gallery called the Art Box where I was going to fill the space with my nature inspired sculptures and that's been delayed due to COVID-19, the global pandemic and rightfully so for everyone's safety. So I will keep you guys posted on my Facebook page for when that is rescheduled. In the meantime, I still want to share some love and caring and some art through this demonstration for how to sculpt hollow forms from pinch pots. So check it out. I will meet you back here at the end of the video and talk to you a little bit about how you can finish your sculpted hearts. See you in a minute. Hey everybody! <laughs> and nobody's with me yet, but uh, this is Janos. We're in my studio. I don't have a fancy setup here for this. I've just got my phone on a shelf here in my studio and uh, I'm going to be working on a pinch pot heart. So if anyone is out there, say something and let me know that you're here. I'll, uh, I'll give you a little tour of the studio real quick. Um, here's the fancy shelves where I'm propping my phone up to do this video. Got my kilns over here. This little kiln. Oops, I may have been covering the microphone. Sorry, you guys. This little kiln, I got this from my very first pottery teacher. Well, a friend of my very first pottery teacher. That kiln, I've completely rewired it and stuff because it's really old. And when I took it apart, there was a piece inside that was dated. And I think it said 1968. So this kiln is really quite old and it's still going strong and I still use it really often because sometimes I just don't want to do a giant load of pottery. And then I've got my my computer kiln here and then another um, I call this one my salvage kiln because I got this from a salvage yard that had gotten a bunch of stuff from an old school and I don't know if that'll show up property of Gwinnett County Schools. Um, yeah, so that kiln I got for a hundred, I think a hundred bucks or 150 bucks. I had to put new elements and stuff in it, but totally sweet. So as people are joining, oh, well, let me go ahead and show you the rest of the studio. Um, this is my wedging table. Here's uh, like my shelves where I dry stuff and it's basically a giant mess in here right now. Got my slab roller over here. Another giant messy table of stuff. I do have a pug mill, which was a gift that I got for myself um, maybe about three years ago now, four. I was having a lot of wrist problems and wedging is really particularly hard for me. So that was sort of an investment in myself. And uh, I, I really do like the pug mill, it's great. I have my main throwing wheel is over here. My God, you guys, I am all over the place with this live feed, I'm so sorry. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and make a pinch pot. I'm gonna prop this up over here and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna make. So yesterday I was doing some work on a project and I had some leftover clay and I was kind of like, uh, 
it might have had um, some brown clay mixed in with it and I wasn't going to put it back in with all of my regular clay and I thought oh, why don't I just make something so I made this little pinch pot heart it's hollow and uh, hi Amanda Liverpool how's it going hey Luke um, so I'm gonna show you guys how to make this with um, just your hands and uh, maybe if anybody wants to make one I posted on my page earlier a picture of this little guy and um, if anybody else is making anything uh, heart wise share some pictures on my Facebook page and if you can't get it to post um, send it to me in a message and, and I'll post it on there for you anyhow hey Belgium wow um, you are a long way away, Luke. I hope things are all right there. Uh, things are kind of mm, not wonderful here. Uh, I live in a state that's called Georgia. And, uh, well, Kelly, you're in Georgia too. Um, we are one of the last ones. Uh, yes, a lot of people doing crafts. Um, we're one of the last places in the U.S. to go on lockdown. And... Uh, uh, some people aren't happy about it still, although I think it is necessary for all our safety. So let me grab some clay and I'll be right back. kind of going to grab a little handful of clay. Let's make a pretty good size heart. So I'm going to take this much clay. I wedged. Hey, Ann, how's it going? My old friend. Hey Curtis, another personal friend. So uh, the first thing, I wedged this clay earlier, so um, I don't feel like I need to wedge it or anything, but I do want to get it into a really nice smooth ball. And when I made that other heart, um, I actually even rolled this on the table to get it really round before I start it. It's not necessary, but I know pinch pots are a pretty basic thing, but you can use them to make some closed forms that you can then sculpt and do really pretty advanced things with. So um, it's a pretty cool or pretty useful tool to have in your uh, in your skill set. So what I'm doing right now is just really smoothing out the surface. So kind of any big cracks like that, I like to smooth that out because as I expand the clay to do the pinch pot, that can be a spot where the clay kind of wants to break out. And you don't really have to do that, but that's the way I like to do it. Hey, Michelle. Hola, Argentina! Wishing you well. We're making a heart, you guys. So I've got this smoothed out pretty well. And I'm going to take my thumb and start pressing in. Make a hole. I know you guys have seen this before, but I promise this will take a different turn than probably what you're used to. So I'm just expanding it out a little bit. I'm going to leave the walls um, maybe about three millimeters or a quarter of an inch or so thick. So I'm not trying to get this super thin. I'm just gradually expanding this. 
So you guys, um, as I mentioned, I had been planning to have a solo show of my nature-inspired work that would have opened today at the Heart Box Gallery, or the Art Box, that's so funny, we're making a heart, so. Um, and that is postponed for obvious reasons, and that's okay. Um, we will do this again in the future sometime, but 4-4 four, four at 4 just seemed uh, meaningful to me. I turned 44 exactly one month ago, and uh, being able to share my artwork with other people is a really special privilege. Hey, Sandy! That's awesome! Anne and Sandy are my old friends who I used to take pottery with here in the Atlanta area. Uh, you too, and I know it was your birthday. I hope you guys, you had a good birthday. So this is um, opened up now. And you can see I left the top fairly thick. And where this is going to possibly take a different turn than your usual pinch pot, I'm going to squeeze the top closed so that we have sort of a round ball that's um, completely hollow. I miss those days too, Sandy. I am I find it such a blessing to be able to stay in touch on Facebook. That's super cool. So I'm running my hand around here and just sort of squeezing. And you can see it starts to close in. I'm just going to keep doing that, applying a little bit of pressure. When did we have classes? Was it Tuesday nights or Thursday nights? I think it was Tuesday, wasn't it, Sandy? Ann? So we're almost closed in. It's a really good idea to use a grog-free clay, so a really smooth clay, and a clay that's fairly plastic to do this kind of a project. You can do it with a, a groggy clay, but this will be nice. Yeah, Tuesdays. So now I completely closed that in. So we've got this hollow ball here. I'm going to continue to really smooth this out so that that is joined really well. Sorry about the lighting, you guys. I was going to use uh, this ring light that I have, but um, I think the aspect ratio is like it would have been on its side and it might not have worked. It's my first Facebook Live, you guys. So I'm just continuing to smooth out this whole surface. And, and while I do that, I'm just going to ramble a little bit for you guys. So, uh, Oh, that's good. Um, you know, the, the stuff that we're going through here is obviously um, scary in many ways. And it's natural for us to want it to just go away. And we've been going through such a period of prosperity and expansion economically through a lot of the world. One thing that comforts me, and it's actually something that I talk about in my artist statement quite a bit, is the cycles uh, that we go through and all of nature has cycles of growth and decline and when I'm having a hard time emotionally, personally, I like to think about the moon a lot. The moon has always been something that I've really connected with. And, you know, you think about it, and obviously the full moon is a very special day. But the moon 
can't be full all the time. And in fact, it goes completely dark, but it shines again. And it's the type of thing that we celebrate about the moon. The same sunrise and sunset, everything is cycles. So sometimes we just have to hold on through the darkness and know that it will get light again. And it's a natural part of life to go through these ups and downs. So I don't know if that might give anyone else out there some something to think about when you're feeling particularly challenged with what's going on. Okay, so I've got this smoothed out really nicely. We've got this completely hollow little pinch pot, actually pretty, pretty decent size. Um, there's air trapped in here, so I can manipulate this pretty significantly to do some sculpting on it. And you can do all kinds of things. Actually, let me show you a few things um, that I happen to have sitting right here in front of me. If you like to do texture, particularly on slab work, and you like to apply texture to things, you can make some little pinch pot balls like this and then texturize their surface. And you can use this to then roll onto other wet clay to apply texture to it. You can do all different kinds of patterns. I have quite a few that I've made that are um, really very cool and it's unique because whatever texture that you put into your pinch pot will be something that only you happen to have in that particular configuration. So that's a fun thing you can do. But let's go ahead and sculpt this into a heart. Hold on just a second. A, uh, my nose is a little runny. Hold on. Hey, honey, I'm doing a Facebook Live. Would you like oh. to say hi? <laughs> <laughs> sure. My husband just dropped in. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get back to it? He didn't know that I was doing this. Okay, so let me grab my heart, show you again what we're aiming for. So here's our little heart that we're going to sculpt out of this pinch pot. Wash your hands. <laughs> Hi, Phil. Okay, so we're going to take this to this. Now the first thing that I want to do is just sort of flatten it out a little bit. So I'm going to hold it between my hands and apply a little bit of pressure. Remember, we've got that air trapped in here, so <laughs> it's providing a lot of resistance. Just kind of working it into a little bit of a flattened pebble kind of a shape. So it's flatter than the, the round ball that it was. So what I want to do now, I'm going to go ahead and make the point that's at the bottom of the heart. And I'm, you know how you pull a handle for a mug? It's going to be a little bit like that. I'm just going to sort of start pinching this clay and moving it. I'm sorry, this is something that can't see very well, but here's the progress. Okay, moving a little bit of this clay down. Let me 
just work at this for a second and then I'll show you how this is coming together. So 11 years ago this year, um, in July, I started doing pottery full time, left my old job. And uh, here's how we're coming along so far. So we're getting this teardrop shape. Um, and one thing that I was fortunate to be able to do two years after that, maybe three years after that, was to do my first artist residency. And uh, the reason I want to talk about that is for all of us who are at home alone, and particularly if you used to work in a group studio and you're now alone, one thing that we can use this time for is almost like an artist residency. So when I did my artist residency, and I've done three, but so here we go. I put a little curve on it. We've got this sort of cute little teardrop shape. Um, I will get back to my artist residency thought in a second. So I'm, again, kind of flattening this a little bit. Hey, Bill, how are you, buddy? Um, so here we go. Now we're going to need to put an indention in the top to sort of split the two lobes of the heart. And then we'll sculpt those so that they're nice and curvy. So I'm going to use one of my custom clay pottery tools, one of my ribs that I made. So this is a big rib. And I don't know if you guys can see the contour. There we go. Yeah, you can really see it there. So this has a nice big edge here. And I'm going to use this to press into the top. <laughs> and then we're going to work on those lobes. And this may split this open at this point, and that's okay because we can add a little bit of clay back and we'll seal that seam. But right now we have this really great volume from starting with that round ball of the pinch pot. So I wanna kinda of eyeball this and make sure I'm starting at the right place to do this. So Gotta be brave, guys. Are you ready? Okay. Look at that. So already huge progress toward our heart here. And now it's a matter of starting to smooth this and get those lobes nice and round and super hearty. So I'm going to sit this down and back to the artist residency thought. So the thing about the artist residency for me that was really transformative was that the particular place where I went, you were completely alone. And in fact, you're so alone that you're really in solitude away from the rest of the world. And you are there only answering to yourself and working on your work. And what that solitude allowed after enough time, probably after at least 10 days of real solitude there from other artists, or from being around other artists who work in the same field. You start to get some really clear vision about what 
your art is about. What are you trying to say? What are you expressing? What is the deep meaning behind the designs that you gravitate to in your work? So I'm just smoothing this out. And being really clear on what your vision is about is an amazing, amazing gift. And true art, I don't think, is about pleasing other people. It's about getting something from deep inside yourself out that needs to be expressed. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. If you ask me, it's a little shallow. So I want to take this dip in the middle much further. I'm going to get my tool back and press in again. This may split this open. We'll see. But when you get really clear about your own inner vision, to me, this is about getting in touch with your inner self, your true self. And the reason that I'm going on about this right now is that this lockdown can be a time to really go within and get clearer about yourself. And I really feel that if we're all more connected to our true selves, we would be much less interested in ever doing harm to other people. We would understand the value in every single person. And by being in touch with our true inner selves, we'd be in touch with our own soul. And we'd be able to accomplish what we came here to do. Why are you here in this body? So this is probably way more than a lot of you bargained for. <laughs> but, That's what I think. Oh, what, what, what do you have here, Amanda? You worked with sugar. Oh, I've seen some of that on TV. Really amazing stuff. Very cool. Oh, hi, Anne. Thank you. <laughs> so you can see this heart is really starting to shape up. I've got this one lobe pretty smoothed out. So I'm gonna start working on the other side here to get this smoothed out. But yeah, you know, it's times like this when you see things really falling apart and things that you just take for granted kind of stopping. And you think about, Gosh, what is the point of all this? Why, why are we here? What are we doing? Well, I think it's a wonderful gift to the world to take time to really think about those things and get in touch with your own soul, your own inner self. <gasps> So I'm working on this other side. You can see this is sort of like a little surface crack here. It's not a hole all the way through. I'm pretty amazed that this didn't uh, didn't break open yet. <laughs> I say yet as if it's definitely going to happen. It may not happen. But yeah, so this heart 
is really me here opening my heart to you guys and wanting to share some of this with you and encourage everyone to really go deep inside. Hey, Eric. Hey, Kathy. How you doing? So it's really shaping up. This looks cool. I like it. So I have a little bit of a wumpy bump on this one side. I'm going to work on a little bit here. You can make all kinds of shapes this way, you guys. This is a really fantastic way to sculpt forms. Working with a completely enclosed hollow form allows you a lot of opportunity to take shapes that would be pretty difficult to form otherwise um, and bring them to life. And it just starts from a simple pinch pot, which is really cool. That's, you know, pretty much the first thing that everyone learns with working with clay. So you can use that old simple skill, virtually no tools except for your thumbs and hands, and do all kinds of stuff with it. Hey, Deb. Wonky. <laughs> Excuse me. So Luke, I don't know if you're still there. Maybe, perhaps not. What time is it there? And Amanda, did you say that you're in UK? What time is it there? So one thing to think about is, you know, what are you gonna do with your, with your closed form? You can do things like this and put a hole in the back to hang on the wall. That's, you can do some really cool forms like that. You could, um, well, I mean, you guys are creative. The sky's the limit. Ooh, pretty late there in UK. Um, you do ideally want to put an air hole in here when you're drying it or else dry it really completely super duper bone dry before you fire it. Um, so at the very least, I do recommend putting a little needle pinhole in here. Um, but if you're thinking about potentially having this for hanging on the wall, go ahead and make a nice size hole uh, choose which side's going to be the back, and uh, you can put a hole in there. So, yeah, so my solo show, you know, we're kind of playing it by ear to see when things will be. I, I don't know that things are ever going to be back to the old normal. We're going to have a new normal going forward. And, uh, you know, that's kind of something that you learn if you've ever gone through any kind of major grief over losing someone that you love. And, you know, you go through something like that and it transforms you, you change. And for a long time you wake up and you think, this isn't how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be this other way, the way that it used to be. And I want it to be back that way, but that is not how it works. And after a while, and it may take a long time with grief, with losing your loved one, you know, you can uh, at some point wake up and you go, okay, I used to be that person who had that particular life and was defined in a certain way, but now I'm different. 
and it's kind of about finding our new normal and boy with this virus it really remains to be seen what that new normal is going to be and uh, that's okay just need to hold on I you know you could stop here I still like um, to have a little bit more of an indention here in the middle so I'm gonna work that a little bit more oh my gosh Amanda I agree with you so much and it's actually my greatest hope that what we're going through right now is a catalyst that transforms our global values really to celebrate well-being and empathy and life over greed. That is my greatest hope that somehow out of what we're going through right now that will happen. And thank you for those hearts. <laughs> so that's what that's what this is all about. I am sending out love to all of you guys and really hoping to share some of that that energy and hoping that other people feel that same way too and we can make that something that happens out of all of this so thank you thank you for sharing that amanda um so i'm gonna go ahead and work this a little bit more for those still watching just pressing in lightly here Ooh, yes, I'm liking that. Okay, so see if I can get the light to really define that. We've got a really nice defined crease there, and it just brings out the three-dimensionality of this with that crease there. I will smooth it a little bit. So yes, I truly, truly hope that our our new normal becomes a much more loving world. I truly hope that. So, you know, I will warn you guys Oh, yes, Kelly, just imagine. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, this looks pretty easy from a practiced hand, uh, as always with pottery, right? So um, particularly if any of you guys are a little um, new with your clay experience, don't get frustrated if you try this and it, your first one or two turn out kind of really blobby or you have trouble getting them nice and smooth. Um, just stick with it. Um, you yeah, don't let that get you down. Um, it takes a while to develop the right, um, the right pressure to your touch on the clay on a hollow form to keep from completely deforming it, but being able to smooth it out and to shape it. So be patient with yourself uh, if you try to make one of these. And my goodness, you guys, I would love to see if any of you um, do make some hearts or it doesn't have to be a pinch pot heart, but any kind of heart. Share that on my page. I want to see that. We need to be sharing our love and encouragement with each other or tag me if you make something hearty. If anybody's connected to my personal page, every time I go outside with my dogs, my backyard is fenced in and uh, it's wooded. So we can't really grow anything out there. And we have rocks in some areas and, uh, Every time I go out with the dogs, 
I kind of follow my gut to a little spot in the yard, wherever it is at that particular time, wherever I feel led to, and I just look at the rocks around my feet and I look for heart rocks. And I have found hundreds of heart rocks in my backyard, but it's something that makes me happy. I, I like to do that every day and it's sort of a little reminder to me to be present in the present moment and to recognize that there is love everywhere. <laughs> I agree, Amanda. Potters are great people. I think people who are drawn to work with clay just tend to be very earthy people. I apologize about all this like looking up my nose situation here. You guys are really sweet. So that's the basics. I'm going to take that other heart. I'm going to, before I would put a hole in this, excuse me, I've got all kinds of little gurgly noises in my throat. Before I make um, a hole in this one, I want to let it set up a little bit. And another piece of advice for working with sculpting hollow forms like this with trapped air inside you might find that it's easiest to first rough it in, sort of get that round shape, and then maybe just flatten it a little bit or move it a little bit toward whatever shape you want to make, but not go all the way to the full sculpting right at once. So you might want to rough it in and let it sit for a little while and then come back. And so after it's a little bit more firm, a little bit dried out, but definitely not leather hard, um, then do your more extreme sculpting on it. So I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to get the one that I made last week. I'm going to make a hole in the back for hanging it on the wall and I'll show you how to do that. So hold on. I didn't make this last week. I made it yesterday. So this one is definitely a lot more firm because this was made yesterday. Now to consider hanging this on the wall, it's uh, it'll definitely hang more easily if whatever the back side is, is a little bit flat. So at this point, um, I'm going to tap it on uh, on a hard surface. So I don't know if I can show that. I guess I can carry you over to uh, my slab roller and tap this, but I, it'll probably be messy. I'll just be right back. Okay, so this is the side of it. Here's the front, and you can see it kind of bulges up more. And then this is the back where I tapped it. I'd tap that. <laughs> okay, bad joke there. So a little bit flattened. And what I'm gonna do is take a hole cutter. It's very convenient that I've got the phone propped up right on my shelf where I have all of my tools staged because they're off this right here. Okay. Looking for the right hole cutter. Ah, here we go. So I like to use these um, hole cutters that are made from like little copper pipes and just kind of want to figure out where you're going to put the hole. So I'm going to just put it in the middle. Although with something like this, since it's bigger, you might want to put two holes. Then you could have it hung on the wall, you know, with two little nails. I typically, hey Todd, um, I would typically hang something like this with little brad nails. So just as very small 
little uh, nails for hanging very light things because, you know, this hardly weighs a thing. So if you had two holes in it, you could make sure that it's level or you could purposely hang it at an angle, that kind of thing. So maybe I'll put two holes in here just to show that. I'm going to choose where they want to go and take this and just put it right through here. Put it in, twist, and pull that out. So you could probably take more time and really get your hole in a great spot. <laughs> We'll do this other hole. There we go. And one thing that I like to do, you don't have to do this, is use a fettling knife. If I can find my fettling knife. Hmm. Fail. I like to make these a little teardrop shape so that once you put a nail in it, it kind of nests right in there. But if you were going to hang it, you know, off to one side, maybe you don't want that and you just want to leave these round. Um, Oh, you know what I should have done? Uh, before you put an air hole in, go ahead, if you stamp your work and make an impression with a stamp, stamp it. Because um, now with with air holes and you push in, so that, you know, might just kind of squish in a little bit. Whereas with the, the air trapped in it, it provides that resistance and you can do your stamp and it's nice and firm. But I am going to go grab my stamp right now. Hey, Glennis. So here's my stamp. This is my signature mark. You can't really see it very well there. Provide a little bit of shadow. Um, I hand carved this out of clay and then bisked it. I'm just going to stamp it right in the middle. There, it turned out good. So there is my stamp. So it's a J and an H combined. And it's also a little takeoff on a symbol for Pisces, which I am a Pisces, as I mentioned. My birthday was exactly a month ago. And I feel like a lot of the um, symbolism with Pisces applies a lot to me personally because um, you know it's often depicted as the two fish swimming in opposite directions and I very much have two very different sides of my personality. Um, people like Glennis know because she's one too. Um, I'm a chemical engineer and used to work as a scientist but um, I'm also an artist and I have really different parts of my <laughs> brain. So that's that Pisces connection there. But that is how you make your pinch pot heart. I appreciate you guys tuning in and watching and listening to me ramble on and really appreciate you guys sharing your thoughts to Amanda. You're awesome. Um, just want to send out some love to everybody out there and wishes for wellness and well-being and be good to each other oh thank you glennis love you bro i'm so glad that van is okay so so thankful oh my gosh oh um yes 
just sending out wishes for for love and well-being to everybody out there and hope hope you're being good to yourself and being good to others and we'll get through this i'm sorry that my camera is surging right now i think it has something to do with the light um hey this was super fun maybe i'll do another one at some point but um yeah thanks you guys love you i'm gonna sign off for now hey you guys i want to genuinely thank you for watching that video i shared a lot of personal feelings and thoughts in it and i've been very touched by the people from around the world who've reached out to me already seeing that they've had similar feelings and just sharing their care and camaraderie with me so thank you guys and also i want to thank everyone who has shared pictures with me of the hearts that you've sculpted after watching the video on my facebook page evolution stoneware pottery i have a photo gallery where i've compiled pictures that people have sent me and if you sculpt a heart and you'd like to share it with me i would love it if you would send me a picture and i will happily share it there in the photo gallery along with your contact information so let's talk about how to finish your hearts so these are the hearts from the video and to finish these here's what i did there are a lot of different techniques you could use but for these particular ones here's what i did so once they were completely dry i brushed on about three coats of a red underglaze and then fired these to cone 04 which is what i bisque fire to once they were fired the first time <clears throat> excuse me i brushed on two to three coats of a clear glaze and then fired these again i did fire mine on stilts and there are a couple different kinds of stilts that you could use so i'll just talk to you about that for a minute the first type of stilt is the type with wires in it and you can use these up to about bisque temperature so for any low fire um, firing these are very safe to use and they minimize the amount of surface contact that your stilt has with your pot to minimize the glaze disruption that you get from the stilt so these are fantastic for low fire but i do find that if you take these up to uh, medium to high fire range the wires will tend to bend under the weight of your piece so if you want to go up to cone six or definitely to cone 10 you'll want to use this other type of stilt that is made completely of some sort of ceramic material so these are available from pottery supply stores now that's just the way that i finished these particular hearts you could use any type of finishing technique that you like to use on your pots so you guys i encourage you to finish your pieces however your heart desires see what i did there yeah. all right okay so enough of the cheesy jokes um i thank you guys again for making it through the whole video and for uh listening to uh, my very personal thoughts and feelings i'm sending out wellness and well-being to everyone out there please be good to yourselves and behave responsibly toward others sending out love see you guys soon bye